this, uh, I will talk in, in three blocks. Uh, the first block, where are we? We're in the middle of Sweden and middle of Norway. Mid Sweden, mid Norway. There's one Euro road, number 14. This is from the airport outside Östersund. Uh, a lot of tourists, the airport's name is Åre, Östersund Airport, because Åre is in Sweden, the major ski resort, 100 kilometer away. Uh, that Volvo V60 plug-in hybrid had just come from the airport, charging. But it's not our infrastructure. We use customers. People, companies invest in infrastructure, okay? Uh, cold climate, so I will take away one issue regarding fast charging. You need a day like this in Sweden or elsewhere for a car to charge with uh, 50 kilowatts with Shadem or CCS. In Östersund, probably less than one and a half month a year. But still, the fast chargers are key installations to have things going, okay? So they are needed. But it's very seldom that they can use full power. The car decides. Uh, the region, once again, uh, this is from uppladning.nu, the only site in Sweden trying to show the infrastructure for charging cars. Uh, I filtered it a bit. And I will get back to that. It's filtered to show only charging with a new air standard, AC and DC, with uh, mode 3 type 2 and CCS, and added also uh, Shademo. Okay? This is almost half the infrastructure in Sweden with a new standard. And we have a, a national assignment from the Swede, Sweden Energy Agency to you during using one and a half year to really make a show off. Increase the infrastructure in such a way that this will be the national example, using the standards. So from one year from now, there will be a, around 100 charging spots added to this. Uh, of course, the same scheme will happen in Norway and Sweden and other countries. Uh, and like Jakob said, make it simple. Don't think too much. Be stupid. Ask the manufacturers, what shall I install? Because the manufacturers today have already adopted the new standards. Don't even think about uh, household outlets. Use the standard. It costs a little bit more, but it's the only way to make it also profitable when it comes to business models. So that's a, a key signal to all citizen municipalities and companies who want to, to uh, install charging infrastructure. Fortum already knows this. They have uh, invented a company called Charge and Drive, where they use the new standards and already use business models. And in Norway, some companies do as well. Uh, you need a brand. And this is something new. You can't call it Statoil or Gulf. So uh, together with the cities of Trondheim, Östersund and Sundsvall, uh, we run the project Green Highway. And this is not the U road, it's the region. Trondelag in Norway, Jämtland, Härjedalen in Sweden, and Western Norland in Sweden, with three major cities. Uh, strongly supported by the energy companies, the utilities, like Jämtkraft and Sundsvall Elnet and uh, NTE in Norway. Uh, so we use that ban when it comes to charging infrastructure. Makes it very visible and stands for something new and will be possible to use over time. The uh, problem with uh, projects like the Green Highway run by municipalities and with money from Interregal E or somewhere is that they are off very often three years. Okay? So the Green Highway project running now will end in August. Okay? They will uh, search for new money and keep on with the project, but that is not the way to make business out of it. But we keep the brand. We don't put the brand away. 
hopefully the, the famous and, and very successful project Green Highway will come to New Period. They're excellent in, in information and, and f works as a catalysator towards the future. But they cannot do the handwork, they cannot make the action when it comes to put up, put up things. Uh, energy companies like, and utility companies like Emcraft cannot do the work, so we need investors. And we have succeeded very well in that. So this is from a mall in Östersund, which have installed a, a major charging spot for electric EVs, airports, hotels, railway stations, ski resorts, and so forth. Make the investments. And we have taught them that it's necessary to do that and invest and dare to invest before the breakthrough for the cars. And we see that uh, uh, the electric cars, of course, tend, like in Oslo, to travel to these areas where you can charge. Uh, if you want to know more about what we are doing together with the uh, Energy the Swedish e e Energy Agency, you can watch for that web address. Uh, unfortunately, everything is in Swedish, but uh, there are some uh, speeches to listen to and some information to read. And we have a lot of, a lot of Swedish uh, guests today here too. Okay, over to some facts. When we started our journey, within this field in 2009, we were uh, reached by a lot of manufacturers who wanted to sell stuff and almost everyone had the perfect solution for payment. And they did not. Very few had thoughts about system. Charging infrastructure needs to work towards the grid, for instance. And uh, so we, we have worked with only people who want to, uh, to can, who can give us experience when it comes to system thinking and so on. And we also decided very early we need to look very much to what's happened from the car manufacturers and from the European per perspective. So ACEA, that's the car manufacturers in Europe. And Euroelectrics, that's the energy branch in Europe. And Klepa, they are the providers for uh, parts to the car industry. They did their homework so well that already 2012 they had a position paper which now the Euro A directive is, is based on with a standardization. And we knew that, so we started to work with the new standard three years ago. It was so obvious, while other investors still uh, bought charging spots with uh, household outlets and, and stuff like that. Major problem. Uh, the standard from the, this point, the point of view is mode 3, AC type 2, and it goes from 3.7 kilowatt up to 22 kilowatts. Okay, 43, but there are no cars running on that one. Not even the Renault Solar will be allowed to run on that one. Can we have the questions later? Or do you want to have it now? Okay. Uh, mode 4, that's uh, the standard word for DC charging with the CCS combo standard. That's the European standard. Goes from 22 kilowatt up to whatever. In this uh, uh, position paper, ACA, ACEA and uh, Electric strongly recommends that all charging from 3.7 kilowatt in public environment shall be equipped with fixed cables. Dot. Mm -hmm. That's something to relate to. Uh, May 21st, one year ago, Vattenfall, Fotten and Jankraft together with Swede Energy, took an initiative to a meeting in Stockholm, together with uh, uh, Bean Sweden, that's the car association in Sweden for both manufacturers and, and importers, 
uh, together with all the Swedish manufacturers, like ABB, Gaul and the others. And during that meeting, we agreed that one year before the standard, work with only the standard. Okay? And that's the cable. If you have uh, outlets with uh, Type 2 on, on a, a charger, that's the cable that you need to use with a car. Okay, a decision like that makes things happen. Can mention one. Uh, Volkswagen, quite large car manufacturer, decided one on the 22nd, the day after, that all electric cars delivered to Sweden, like the EAP and the Golf coming up now, will be equipped, paid by Volkswagen, with this cable since Sweden made a decision. Renault does the same. And finally, which makes it very simple for those of us who don't want to think too much, like me, there's a standard now. It's decided in April 2014. And this is from the standard. AC shall be equipped with at least socket outlets or vehicle connectors of type 2. At least. And direct current DC high power recharging shall be equipped with at least CCS combo. So the standard says this is needed, but it's okay to also have Shademo protocol for the fast chargers as long as you have it together with the CCS. And it's okay to really look into the standard that they are, uh, is built on this uh, uh, directive where it says in case C that the car industry and a lot of other people strongly recommend the fixed cables. So this is the lowest level, okay? That's okay. You don't need to do anything more like that, but you can do more. Uh, and that's going for the fixed cables, the case C. Uh, you can see it very well here in this picture. This is extremely customer friendly. This uh, idea of having fixed cable makes the electric cars really want to charge in public environment, which is essential if we ever are going to make money out of this. No one likes to take a dirty cable out of the car, twist it out, attach it, put it back in the car in rain or snow. This is making it simple. And one more thing, this is making the car charge with the correct power. The cable that comes with the car, with the household outlet, is maximum 10 amps. That means maximum 10 kilometers per hour. But the cars are built for uh, 16 amps, at least, or 32 amps, single phase, which means 20 kilometers in an hour or 40 kilometers in an hour. I can give you an example from a small municipality in the south of Jamtland, Baris municipality. Uh, they use uh, Nissan Leafs, the new model for uh, social workers. They have long distances. They could not do this without having charging spot that could provide the car with 7.2 kilowatts or 7.4 kilowatts, sorry, that is 32 amps. So if we really want to have the car used, build the charging infrastructure the way the cars are built. Look for the car industry. Smart charging is a word that is used by ACE and your electrics and it means it has to be somewhat intelligent, not only somewhat. You use five fingers. These are the components needed. You need a car that has to communicate with a charger. And those two physical things need a human being, a user. They need the grid. And to put it all together for business models and maintenance and managing and everything else, you need the cloud. Exactly like we run our telephones 
or computer today. You have to be able to work the charging spots, the chargers from a distance. This is a, a Volvo C30, uh, a new test model. It will never be on the market, but it's built by Volvo and Siemens in Germany, and it uses AC3 phase, like the Tesla. So, of course, when you put up a fast charger, I agree strongly with Jakob and with charge and drive, Magnus. Use not only one charger. If you have a fast charger DC, put some AC chargers beside it and equip them for 22 kilowatts. 22 kilowatts is simple. It may come on more cars. The investment is slightly more expensive than 16 amps single phase, only slightly. Maybe 4,000 Swedish crowns, 400 euros. But the total investment is not only the equipment, it's digging and, and attaching to the grid and everything else. So 400 euros is nothing. Uh, it gives the car 100 kilometers in an hour. So in Jämtland, where we have a lot of 22 kilowatts AC chargers, the Teslas from Norway, they, we don't have any Tesla supercharger.